Welcome again. Right now we're at John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And this is a very, very exciting time. This is a very interesting, very powerful portion of Scripture because this is like the epitome. If there ever was an epitome of Jesus' ministry on earth, if there ever was a peak of of his uh, life on earth, this is it. John chapter 12, verse 12. On the next day, a great multitude had come to the feast. When they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Wow. Here is Jesus' moment. He is being proclaimed as the Messiah, as the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah. They were looking for a king to come, take his throne politically in, in Israel, in Jerusalem, okay? And here is, here is Yeshua. He is entering Jerusalem, and people are crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Wow. This is, again, if there ever was a peak of Jesus' ministry, this is it. This is his time. Now, let's go back to the scriptures and look at this word, Hosanna. You see a little uh, symbol here, and it says, Hosanna means save us or help us, we pray. So in the Hebrew, it's literally Hosanna. When you call Hosanna, You are basically calling for salvation. You are basically, what they did here is they more or less pronounced Jesus as the Savior, as the Messiah, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Again, let's go back to Scripture and take another look at this. Right here, you'll see another little note here. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord is actually... Uh, a quote right out of Psalm 118, verses 25 to 26. So right there, the people were fulfilling one of the prophecies of Yeshua in Psalm 118. Whether or not they knew it, we'll read about it later. Let's go on. Verse 14, Jesus, having found a young donkey, sat on it. As it is written, don't be afraid, daughter of Sion. Behold, your king comes sitting on a donkey's colt. And this here is also a fulfillment of prophecy. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. This is layer upon layer of prophecy shining through here in this one event. Verse 16, his disciples didn't understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. So they didn't really understand, you know, at the time. They didn't really see it at the time, but afterward they were like, you know, uh, kind of reflecting on what just happened. Hey, when everybody cried out, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, that was a fulfillment of Psalm 118. Hey, when he came riding on a, on a donkey, that was Zechariah who? Chapter 9, verse 9. And on and on it goes. Verse 17, the multitude, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead was testifying about it. So we had people there that were there when, when Lazarus was raised from the dead. And they were going around, I mean, Think of the, oh, what's the word? I mean, think of the the implications of the moment here. It's just astronomical, okay? We have all this prophecy being fulfilled at once. It's Jesus' peak in his life. And also these people going around, and one of the most awesome things that Jesus ever did, raise someone from the dead after being dead four days. And we got all these witnesses going around, to, hey, man, you know, you see this guy, this guy whom they're proclaiming to be king of Israel, Hoshiana, the savior. He's the one we saw with our eyes. 
He raised Lazarus from the dead. And as I said in the in the last, um, actually a few videos ago, I said that the Hebrew name of Lazarus was Eleazar or Eliezer. Okay. Now again, if you know the Greek naming conventions, the Greeks, the Greek uh, language a lot of times puts the uh, puts like s on the end of names. And like we got Marcus, Lucas, Barnabas. You know, we've got Jesus. Okay. And so uh, we know that Jesus Hebrew. Uh, Hebrew name is Yeshua. Okay, I know some people have different variations of that. And that's uh, you know that's another whole thing to discuss. But Yeshua, Yeshua, you know, and Greek would add the s at the end. Yeshus in the Greek it's Yesus, which became Jesus throughout the centuries and in, transliterated into English. So here Lazarus was, you know. Again, in the Hebrew, for those of you who are not very familiar with Hebrew, there are no vowels in Hebrew. Um, at least there are no vowels as we know, as we have in English today. It's mainly just consonants, okay? Like uh, Eliezer or Elazar, Elazar is like would be L, Z, and R. So Lazar, and then Lazar, Lazar, Elazar. And then the Greek would add the S at the end. So uh, that's just a little side note there. But think of the astronomical and powerful uh, scene we got here. So much prophecy being fulfilled. And then we got all these witnesses that saw Lazarus being raised from the dead, going around testifying about it. Wow. Okay, verse 18 for this cause also the multitude went and met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, see how you accomplish nothing? Behold, the world has gone after him. So the Pharisees here were not very pleased. Um, they didn't think that Jesus was the Messiah. Now when I say they, again, it's generically speaking. We know from previous scriptures that we've read that some Pharisees actually did believe. And I know that uh, in Christian, Christian circles today, the word Pharisee has really got a bad name. But don't forget that most of the New Testament was written by a Pharisee, okay? Paul said himself in Philippians, you know, that he is a Pharisee. He didn't say I was a Pharisee. He didn't say I repented from my Phariseeism. No, he said, I am a Pharisee. He boldly proclaimed himself to be a Pharisee. We know there were other Pharisees, like Nicodemus, for, for example. Some people even believe that Jesus himself was a Pharisee because he hung around with Pharisees so much, and Pharisees didn't really hang around with anybody but their own kind. Okay, they had their own little exclusive club, as if it were, okay? So, um, so yeah, so we got these Pharisees that were, they were very, uh, very concerned to, see, to say the least, because so much was going for Jesus at this, at this point in time. So much was going for him. You know, the works that he did, the people that accepted him at that time, um, the scriptures that seemingly was fulfilled, uh, so no wonder the Pharisees were very, very concerned about what was happening. Like, what, what are we going to do? Like, everybody's going after Jesus. The whole world is going after him now. Like, wow. Now, again, here's another good little side note here, okay? Because I know a lot of people, they like to quote, quote scriptures like John 3, 16, and they say, for God so loved the world. Well, the world doesn't necessarily mean every single person, you know, that's ever existed or that exists, okay? It doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean everybody in a very absolute universal sense. Here again, we see the, wor the, the term the world, okay? And we know that the whole world wasn't going after him at that time. We know the natives of North, North America weren't all clamoring around Jerusalem at that time. We know that China, uh, everybody in China wasn't there at that time. We know that the Aztecs wasn't there at that time. You know, we know that a lot of people that were living in the world didn't even know about Yeshua at that time. So is another good example when you see the term the world here, and this is John, again, 
Take it in context, John 3, 16, and John here, we're going to get to John uh, chapter 17 uh, a little bit later, and that's another good portion of, of Scripture concerning the world and how um, that kind of flies in the face of John three sixteen. at least in the modern popular interpretation of John three sixteen. okay? Here's, here's another good example. The world here doesn't mean every single person in the world. It doesn't. It's just talking about a specific specific people in a specific area of the world, okay? And so it's just a very generic term. The world is going after him. Everybody's going after him. So once again, thanks again for listening, and God bless you in your pursuit of truth and your pursuit of him. Now, what you're doing here is is really what you need to do. You need to get in the scriptures. You need to talk about the scriptures. You need to, you need to think about the scriptures. You need to pray about the scriptures, and God will lead you and guide you in all truth. But don't forget the most important thing is here. Once you've read it, once you've understood it, once you've thought about it, once you've studied it, do it.